In the fall of her senior year, star pace women's lacrosse player Courtney Papps suffered an ACL tear in her left knee, an injury that she had already successfully bounced back from earlier in her career. This time, however, the subsequent recovery would go in a much more frightening direction. Like we knew that Courtney was going in for surgery November 1st. She had the first surgical appointment or one of the early slots. And it kind of got to 2 p.m. and I hadn't heard, so I texted her and then I texted her mother. And I didn't hear back, 2.30ish, 3 o'clock, I got a text from her mom saying, Trish, they don't think she's going to make it. <laughs> at first, you know, I had no idea. And I just had woken up and I was like, I looked at the, they had like a big board on the wall that had the date on it. And I was looking at the date and I was like, mom, why are we still here? Like, let's go home. But, um, you know, it took a couple days and then they kind of started to tell me everything that had gone on. Like, oh my goodness, you know, I had no idea. They thought that Courtney had an infection. They were putting her under sepsis and things like that. Um, they were putting, you know, all of these things they were treating her for because they just were not sure what had occurred. While Courtney was under the knife, she suffered a pulmonary embolism, resulting in back-to-back -back cardiac arrests. Life-saving resuscitation led to the doctors placing Courtney in a medically induced coma. Even before that, there were moments of Courtney ask things before she could even talk, like when she was still kind of sedated and induced. Um, she had these oven mitts on for to rewarm her hands and she was being really combative with nurses and kind of moving her arms around. And, and you know, it was something I was telling the girls every night, like she's 100% fighting in there. She's somewhere, she's fighting, like she does not want to be in this situation. While Courtney continued her fight to stay alive, her doctors and family decided that she needed to be moved from one hospital unit to another, traveling via ambulance to a unit better suited to handle her severe condition, a decision that didn't come without huge risk. Um, there was a lot of hysteria, I think, through that, those couple hours of just getting her settled because her heart was so unstable and her breathing was so unstable. There was so much fluid in her lungs that she just wasn't they just were not certain she would survive the ambulance trip. When I woke up, it was all positive. You know, the things I hear from my family is just morbid, you know, like I, I don't remember any of that horrible stuff. So once I woke up, you know, everything was kind of progressing and everyone was, you know, like happy with the progress that had been going on. So I didn't really experience any of the crazy kind of trauma, but you know, once she kind of came out of the induced coma and started breathing on her own um, and eating a little bit here and there on her own, they realized that the circulation in her legs really was not good. They had me in these crazy, ridiculous, giant boots. And, you know, they had showed me both my feet at one point. And it was just, you know, not pretty. but. You know, you could tell that my right leg was just like I couldn't move anything and couldn't feel anything. And um, it took a little while, but then once they said, like, listen, we might have to do some sort of amputation. And I remember it, when they told me that, I was like, well, let's just do it. You know, like if it needs to get done, you know, let's just do it. A few of them had come to the hospital, it was super exciting, you know, I hadn't seen them, I see them, you know, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, so it was weird being away from them. Um, so getting to see them was super exciting. Um, and then eventually, on my last day in the hospital, we actually had uh, like a team party, so it was really exciting because everyone got to come, we had breakfast and treats and everything like that. Everyone's just so supportive in my community. So. It was super great to, I don't know, it was just so much love and support all the time, 24 seven, you know. I was never alone in all this. Even in the hospital when they had mentioned amputating, 
this, there's a player from UMass Lowell, Noelle Lambert, who Courtney was telling her family members in the hospital, like, I can do this. This girl is doing it. There's no reason I can't. And that, I mean, it gives me goosebumps thinking about it because I can picture her saying that to her family members and remember the conversation so well. I remember my the first conversation they had with me where they told me they might need to do some sort of amputation. Like, they didn't know, you know, really the prognosis of it, but they knew they would have to do it. And my first thought was, you know, I can deal with that, but like, can I play lacrosse? And he's like, yeah, of course you can, you know? And, you know, while that didn't work out initially, totally was my thought, yeah. While Courtney's storied lacrosse career had come to an end, it didn't stop her from miraculously being in attendance at Pace's first practice of the spring in late January. Traveling in a wheelchair, covered in blankets and layered in pace gear, Courtney was all smiles to be returning to both the sport and the team that she loved. Sienna, our goalie, our starting goalie, whenever Courtney warms her up, is still like Courtney's one of the best shooters on the team. Like she doesn't have to sh run and shoot, she just is still, she, she's like, I still have trouble saving your shots. 